Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India on from uh, one dimensional flows that we have been uh, doing till now uh, to uh, two dimensional flows uh, increase the dimension uh, and we look at shock waves in uh, two dimensions uh, they form what are known as uh, oblique shocks we will understand oblique shocks and uh, uh, expansion waves uh, in this module and look at how to apply them uh, so, uh, till now we have been doing uh, normal shocks, we did stationary and moving normal shocks and we understood uh, the unsteady flows uh, in the context of a shock tube. Uh, so, now we move on, many of the principles we learned there will be applicable here in uh, oblique shocks. Also something uh, new uh, because you have an added dimension. So, now we look at uh, oblique shocks. So, when are uh, oblique shocks formed? Whenever the flow has to uh, take a turn for example, as depicted in this uh, particular schematic over here, uh, you have an uh, oncoming flow uh, which is supersonic. Always you should remember that shock waves are found in supersonic flows. So, a supersonic flow is coming and uh, then it faces a uh, turn ok. So, this is a turn which turns the flow towards into itself or towards itself ok. So, when the flow turns towards itself then uh, it forms an oblique shock. So, uh, the, uh, the manner in which oblique shock is uh, formed in principle is the same as we discussed in the case of a normal shock you can have several uh, compression waves and all of these compression waves will uh, ultimately join together to form the uh, oblique shock. Now, you can see this oblique shock is at an angle uh, to the um, upstream flow and uh, after the oblique shock the flow gets turned uh, toward, towards itself and parallel to the wall uh, that is over here. So, uh, uh, that is uh, what happens across an oblique shock and it is a shock wave, it is a compression wave. So, pressure, temperature, density uh, increases, Mach number uh, decreases across the oblique shock, uh, but unlike the normal shock you will find uh, that in an oblique shock it is possible to have uh, Mach numbers uh, downstream of the shock to be greater than 1. So, this is one case where you have a, a shock wave, oblique shock wave flow before the shock wave is greater than 1, flow after the shock wave uh, can continue to be greater than 1. So, it is a possibility in oblique shocks. Uh, so, one kind of a turn uh, uh, that the flow can experience uh, is a turn towards itself uh, and uh, producing a compression. Uh, in that case, it produces an oblique shock. Uh, the other case is when the flow turns away from itself which is uh, described over here. The uh, flow is coming uh, uh, at supersonic speeds and now it has to turn away. Now, you see the wall is turned away by an angle uh, theta and uh, so uh, we have already discussed the something that you should always remember. Uh, that uh, shocks are always compressive in nature, you do not have an expansion shock. Uh, similarly, in this case also you will not have an expansion shock, but instead you have an expansion fan which is an isentropic process where entropy uh, may remains constant and uh, across the fan the angle is turned away from the initial direction and this expands or rather accelerates the flow. 
the Mach number after an expansion fan increases, so Mach number increases, pressure, temperature um, and density uh, will decrease. So, uh, these kinds of shocks are found in any kind of bodies uh, that are there in uh, supersonic flows. And so, if you have a typical structure, uh, something of this kind having many different shapes, then you will find shock waves here. Mm, you can have shock waves at this a corner, but when the flow turns away, here you can have expansion fans and these are typical to any uh, aircrafts or spacecrafts uh, or uh, in other cases duct flows uh, that are there uh, present. And uh, we discuss here in the context of uh, two dimensional flows um, that it is in x y domain. Uh, so, x y domain. Uh, so, they are uh, like flows over flat plates or wedges. Uh, then uh, there are the class of flows like flows over cones or um, axisymmetric bodies. Their equations are different. We will see towards the end of this uh, uh, lecture. Uh, there are slight differences, but basic principles do not change. Uh, so, uh, if you understand oblique shocks, you can understand expansion fans you will understand several aspects of uh, flow features around bodies in uh, supersonic flow. So, how do we analyze uh, oblique shock? So, oblique shock uh, analysis uh, borrows things from normal shocks as well as uh, from the idea that you had uh, when doing moving normal shock that you uh, jump onto the shock. So, even in oblique shock it is the same thing. Uh, you do uh, this is a stationary flow. So, it is a steady flow, it is not an unsteady flow, uh, it is a steady flow, but now you see this has uh, two dimensions. The shock is oblique, it is at an angle to the flow, it is not normal to the flow. So, there are both components in uh, x and y direction, both directions. So, x direction as well as uh, y direction, uh, and the way to analyze this is. Uh, jump onto the shock and sit at the shock and uh, then analyze uh, the flow features uh, uh, before and after the shock uh, in the frame of the shock. So, that is how it is done. So, the analysis is done by taking um, components um, parallel and normal. So, this is normal, this is the tangential components. So, you take uh, components uh, normal and tangential to the shock. And uh, uh, as we did for normal shock, here also we use the control volume. So, you can see the control volume being drawn here. Uh, V1 is the velocity, uh, upstream velocity, incoming velocity um, V1, and after the shock, uh, the uh, velocity is V2. Uh, the flow has been turned by an angle theta. Okay. And uh, oblique shock forms at an angle beta, theta and beta are not the same. So, beta is uh, always it is higher than uh, theta. So, this is uh, beta. Uh, so, uh, uh, the important uh, fact here is you take a control volume and uh, this control volume is drawn uh, enveloping the uh, shock wave and uh, this these phases are actually parallel to the shock wave. So, um, you are uh, actually doing the analysis uh, in the frame of the uh, shock, oblique shock. Also, remember this uh, velocity diagrams, the decomposition of the uh, velocities into different uh, components, uh, which is normal and perpendicular uh, to the oblique shock. So, uh, now, this is the oblique shock, uh, this is the incoming stream here uh, V 1 and uh, uh, the uh, stream forms an angle uh, beta uh, or the, the shock wave forms an angle beta to the uh, upstream incoming flow. So, um, this angle is going to be beta. Okay. 
So, uh, the uh, stream is now decomposed into components which are uh, parallel and uh, perpendicular to the oblique shock. So, uh, U uh, is the uh, uh, perpendicular component. So, U 1 is uh, V 1 sin beta, while W 1 is the uh, tangential or the parallel component it is V 1 cos beta. And the flow after it passes through the oblique shock uh, it has a uh, velocity V 2 and the flow has been de deflected by an angle theta. Uh, this deflection is uh, it may be due to the presence of a wedge as shown in the previous uh, uh, slide. And uh, so, uh, now the relevant angle here is uh, to decompose uh, the velocities in the frame of the shock is this angle which is uh, beta minus theta. So, you get uh, u 2 is uh, v 1 uh, sin of beta minus theta and w 1 is uh, uh, sorry v 2 sin beta minus theta and w 2 is v 2 cos beta minus theta. So, uh, this uh, uh, velocity uh, decomposition has to be understood. So, I will pause here for a moment, uh, so that you understand this velocity decomposition. Uh, this is the uh, uh, control volume that is uh, drawn, uh, which will be used for uh, the analysis of the shock wave. And uh, this is drawn uh, very close and fitting with the shock wave. And uh, this is a stream tube. So, essentially these are streamlines. Okay. So, with this uh, understanding and uh, this particular understanding of the uh, decomposition, let us look uh, go ahead and do the uh, control volume analysis across an oblique shock. Uh, we always start with the continuity equation uh, steady flow. Uh, continuity equation uh, in the steady flow there is no change in the mass of the control volume. So, this is uh, 0 and uh, only uh, we are looking at the fluxes across the uh, control volume. So, it is bound between uh, two uh, streamlines. So, there is no flux um, of mass um, across uh, these directions. So, there is no flux. So, there um, it is a streamline uh, and only flux that goes in is entering through A and leaving through D. So, uh, that is what we have to do. Uh, we have to calculate what is the uh, mass flux entering through A and leaving through D. And uh, since there is no accumulation of mass, uh, it is a steady flow, then uh, these two fluxes have to be the same. So, in order to find uh, what is the um, accumulation, uh, sorry, what is the flux? So, flux is uh, V dot N uh, dA. So, where you have to uh, take the uh, component uh, which is perpendicular uh, to the free stream velocity. Um, so, the area perpendicular to the uh, free stream uh, or uh, to the stream. So, that area is actually uh, A 0 sin beta, where A 0 is uh, the phase that is across. So, this A is A 0. So, this is A 0. So, A 0 is across that it is parallel it uh, remains the same uh, for both these cases. Mm, so, uh, uh, the flux now is rho 1 A 0 sin beta because it has to be perpendicular and multiplied by V 1 uh, is equal to rho 2 A 0 uh, sin beta minus theta that is the multiplied by V 2. Okay. Now, uh, V 1 sin beta is uh, the uh, perpendicular component uh, perpendicular to the uh, oblique shock which is U 1 and uh, V 2 sin beta minus theta is uh, U 2 perpendicular component to the shock downstream of the shock and A 0 is the same. So, you get 
rho 1 u 1 is equal to rho 2 u 2. So, this uh, means that uh, uh, this is the continuity equation for the oblique shock uh, flow through the oblique shock and ultimately you get the equation that uh, is the same as the continuity for uh, the normal components. Now, uh, from uh, continuity the next part is always uh, the momentum. So, we go to the momentum equation again it is a steady flow. So, uh, unsteady terms are not there and uh, we are not considering any body forces or any uh, viscous forces. So, even this term uh, considering the body forces are not there and only we are uh, looking at um, the flux of momentum and uh, balance it with the pressure forces. But now uh, this is a vector equation you have two components one is uh, uh, parallel to the uh, oblique shock or tangential to the oblique shock the other one is uh, normal to the oblique shock. So, first uh, let us consider the uh, parallel component or the tangential common component to the oblique shock. Now, we should always uh, remember uh, that pressure uh, is a, a normal force. So, it always acts uh, normal to the uh, uh, to the area. Uh, so, when we are considering the oblique shock uh, the pressure force uh, that you are considering will be normal to this area that is uh, a and uh, you will have no tangential components across uh, this particular due to pressure uh, of force uh, at A and uh, the flow upstream and downstream of the uh, oblique shock are uniform flows. So, it is uh, all P 1 V 1 uh, T 1 here and P 2 V 2 T 2 here uh, on the uh, downstream side. So, now when you uh, uh, look at uh, components across the uh, the phases B and F uh, they get cancelled to each other because it is uniform all around and C and E also similarly the pressure forces get cancelled to each other. So, there are no pressure forces uh, that appear in the equation for the um, tangential component uh, of uh, the uh, velocity uh, that we are tangential components of, of um, the momentum flux. So, momentum flux uh, is nothing but m dot multiplied by uh, the velocity. So, we uh, we are looking at uh, tangential components. So, it will be m dot multiplied by um, w 1. Okay. So, m dot w 1 um, m dot is rho 1 u 1 uh, this we did uh, just uh, previously in the continuity equation. So, rho 1 u 1 w 1 is the momentum flux in the tangential direction and uh, you get uh, uh, this is minus plus rho 2 u 2 w 2 should be equal to sum of all uh, pressure forces, but uh, no pressure forces act in the tangential uh, direction. So, this is 0. So, you get uh, rho 1 u 1 w 1 is equal to rho 2 u 2 w 2 and uh, from here you get uh, rho 1 u 1 equal to rho 2 u 2. So, you get w 1 equal to w 2. So, uh, the tangential uh, velocity mm, that is velocity in the direction parallel to the oblique shock is conserved. It remains the same uh, before and after the shock. It is a very important result and uh, that will uh, determine how you will analyze uh, oblique shocks. So, now uh, let us consider the uh, uh, normal direction. Uh, so, now normal direction there is a uh, pressure force acting uh, which is P 1 and P 2 uh, across the oblique shock P 1 before the oblique shock and P 2 after the oblique shock and uh, the momentum flux is rho 1 u 1 uh, multiplied by u 1 mass multiplied by velocity. So, multiplied uh, mass flow rate actually rho 1 u 1 mass flux multiplied by velocity rho 1 u 1. Uh, so, it is rho 1 u 1 square ok. So, minus rho 1 u 1 square plus rho 2 u 2 square is equal to uh, minus of um, p 2 minus p 1. So, this is the equation. So, you get from here P 
p1 plus rho 1 u1 square is equal to p2 plus rho 2 u2 square okay so this is momentum conservation for the normal component uh, across the oblique shock now we come to energy equation uh, energy equation is an adiabatic flow so uh, total energy total enthalpy is conserved h1 plus v1 square by 2 is equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 here v1 and v2 uh, are the um, uh, total velocities they are not components uh, and this is uh, kinetic energy essentially so uh, v1 square is nothing but h1 plus uh, u1 square plus w1 square by 2 is equal to h2 plus u2 square plus w2 square by 2 okay uh, but from our uh, analysis of the momentum equations we understood that w1 equal to w2 the, the tangential components are the same so this goes off and you get uh, h1 u1 uh, h1 plus u1 square is equal to h2 plus u2 square now if you consider uh, the set of equations for the normal component of velocity it is rho 1 u1 equal to rho 2 u2 then uh, p1 plus rho 1 u1 square is equal to p2 plus rho 2 u2 square and h1 plus um, u1 square by 2 is equal to h2 plus u2 square by 2 the moment you see the set of equations you must be reminded of our analysis all this while about uh, normal shocks so uh, that is the key idea here that to analyze uh, oblique shocks uh, is uh, uh, the simple idea is just decompose the velocities uh, into normal and tangential components to the oblique shock okay. and uh, once you do that uh, the tangential velocity remains the same and the normal components uh, the relationship is exactly that of a normal shock wave so this is uh, just a the equations for normal shock so normal components of velocity you apply normal shock equations and then uh, apply the condition that w1 is equal to w2 and you are done with uh, uh, solving oblique shock equations so uh, you see that uh, oblique shocks are uh, present in uh, two dimensional uh, flows unlike normal shocks uh, but once you decompose them in the frame of the oblique shock you come back to the equations of normal shocks for the normal component and the tangential velocity is conserved so this is the uh, key idea once you understand this idea understanding uh, uh, analysis of oblique shocks is uh, fairly uh, straightforward so what do we do uh, so we know that uh, the normal shock relations all uh, relations p2 by p1 t2 by t1 okay uh, m2 all of them are just functions of the upstream mach number m1 and uh, gamma okay we know this one for the normal shock normal shock now for an oblique shock uh, we just now has have found out that if you take the normal component uh, it's going to uh, be the same as that of a normal shock now uh, what about uh, speed of sound speed of sound is a local quantity a mm, uh, so it, it does not have any direction so uh, when we talk about uh, uh, the mach number so m2 is v2 or m1 is v1 by a1 and uh, they they can have individual uh, components that uh, the mn uh, mn1 that is normal component of the shock is u1 by um, a1 and uh, m t1 tangential component is w1 by a1 okay so the a1 is the same thing so this is nothing but uh, you can say mn1 is v1 sin beta by a1 which is m1 
sin beta. So, uh, the normal component is related to uh, the Mach number in the same sense as the velocity is uh, related. So, uh, m n 1 is m 1 sin beta. So, uh, once you know this the jump conditions across the shock oblique shock is given uh, for the normal component of uh, uh, the velocity or Mach number. So, uh, you substitute m n 1 in the normal shock relations and you can get uh, the all the uh, relations for uh, pressure ratio, uh, density ratio, temperature ratio. So, all of them uh, that analysis that you had done for normal shocks you can carry on uh, again over here uh, and do it for the normal component of the oblique shock. So, you have an oblique shock here, uh, uh, it is at an angle beta creating a flow deflection of uh, theta uh, for an incoming flow of m 1, uh, Mach number m 1 velocity is v 1 and results in m 2 v 2. Okay. Now, uh, the key uh, idea is just decompose this normal to the uh, oblique shock it is m n 1 and here you will get m n 2. Okay. So, you can find m n 2 uh, which is uh, the normal um, shock uh, the uh, uh, flow downstream of the normal shock, but m n 2 is only the normal component of uh, the downstream velocity there is a tangential component also. Uh, so, the tangential component w 1 is same as uh, w 2. Okay. Uh, now, uh, be very careful uh, here because uh, the velocity triangle or the velocity diagram for this is this is the oblique shock we are looking at the downstream flow it has been turned by an angle mm, theta and uh, this is u 2 normal component and this is w 2 only w 1 equal to w 2 and uh, what is uh, now the relationship between u uh, 2 and v 2. So, this is u uh, 2 is v 2 sin beta minus theta. Uh, we can divide both sides by A 2. So, we get uh, this is m n 2 is equal to m 2 sin beta minus theta. So, from here we can get what is the Mach number downstream of the oblique shock it is m n 2 by sin beta minus theta. Okay, so, uh, uh, this is uh, very important. So, uh, after doing all conversions we should not just leave it at the normal component we should convert back to uh, the total velocity which is uh, v 2 or m 2 uh, and uh, please understand the conservation is for uh, of tangential component is for uh, velocity uh, m t 1 is not equal to m t 2. Uh, you should understand that because m t 1 is w 1 by a 1 while m t 2 is uh, w 2 by a 2. Now, a 1 is not equal to a 2. So, these two are not equal, but the velocities are uh, equal. Okay. So, once you understand this uh, you will not make any uh, errors and be careful in this analysis. So, now uh, we have expressed uh, all uh, quantities flow variables in terms of uh, uh, the Mach number beta theta, okay. but uh, uh, the relationship between these two we do not know. What is the relationship between Mach number beta and theta? Uh, because it is a two dimensional problem you have to have uh, two variables. Um, which is usually you will be knowing Mach number and flow deflection or you will know Mach number and um, the shock wave angle which is beta. 
So, unless you know these two variables you cannot uh, solve the uh, oblique shock problem. If you know only theta and you do not know anything else uh, then it is not possible. It is unlike the normal shock where you needed the information only about uh, upstream uh, Mach number. If you know m1 you know everything about normal shock, but in an oblique shock besides m1 you need to know either the shock wave angle or uh, theta. So, what is the relation between m theta and uh, beta? How can we find that out? Uh, uh, principle is very much uh, very same uh, that uh, tangential component is conserved ok. Uh, tangential component is conserved w 1 is equal to w 2 and what about u uh, 2 by u 1 ok, u 2 by u 1 ok. This is a normal shock relation. So, rho 1 u 1 is equal to rho 2 u 2. So, u 2 by u 1 is rho 1 by uh, rho 2. So, rho 1 by rho 2, uh, but u 2 by u 1 I can also write as u 2 w 2 multiplied by u 1 uh, w 1 by u 1 uh, and w 1 equal to w 2 that is known and uh, u 2 by uh, w 2 is tan beta minus theta from the velocity triangles uh, tan uh, beta minus theta while u 1 by w 1 is tan beta and uh, so u 2 by u 1 is tan beta minus theta by tan beta and uh, that is same as uh, rho 1 by rho 2 which is the same as rho 1 by rho 2 and uh, how do we get rho 1 by rho 2? Rho 1 by rho 2 is uh, you get by the normal component of the velocity m 1 square Oh, sorry m 1 sin beta and you use the expression for uh, rho 1 by rho 2 which is given here these two are the same and uh, so here you get a relationship which contains beta theta and Mach number as well as gamma. So, this is the relationship which uh, relates um, beta theta and Mach number. Now, this can be simplified to certain trigonometric identities and algebraic manipulations and uh, here it is uh, written explicitly, explicitly for tan theta, theta is the deflection angle tan theta is uh, 2 cot beta. Uh, so, all terms of Mach number beta and gamma are on the uh, right hand side ok 2 cot beta m 1 sin square beta minus 1 divided by m 1 square gamma plus cos 2 beta plus 2. Okay, so, what uh, you can understand from this relation is that uh, first thing is that this is not a, a very simple relation. So, you can expect, expect a certain nonlinear behavior here and uh, uh, second thing is uh, if you know m 1 and beta uh, you can uh, easily find out uh, by uh, supplying into this equation uh, substituting m 1 and beta we can find tan theta. Uh, but uh, if you know m 1 and theta which is often the case that you know uh, the deflection angle you know the shape of the body, uh, but uh, and the Mach number where it goes uh, then you need to find the shock wave angle uh, because all the analysis is with respect to the shock wave angle. Uh, then uh, this cannot be uh, easily solved through some analytical means. So, uh, this is uh, trying to invert this relationship, inverse for this relationship is not easy, you have to use some numerical method uh, to get to the inverse or the other way uh, around for this is uh, that uh, these are plotted you can find these plots in any textbooks. For example, these plots I have taken from uh, fundamentals of gas dynamics from in Zucker and Bilbras. Uh, Biblars uh, and uh, similarly any uh, gas dynamic textbook will give you the plots of uh, m which is Mach number here ok and uh, shock wave angle uh, here it is given theta what we have referred to is as beta. So, uh, please look at the textbook that you are using or the graph that you are using and be careful uh, with respect to the conventions they follow. Uh, so, different textbooks have different conventions, mm, we uh, in our descriptions we have used beta as the shock wave angle, 
but this textbook uses theta as the shock wave angle and uses delta as the deflection angle or we use theta as deflection angle. Uh, and this is plotted you can look at the plots so you can see a non-linear uh, behavior here and you can also see that for a given Mach number if you take a particular Mach number then um, there are actually two uh, points at which uh, a vertical line from the Mach number cuts the curve uh, that is having the same um, delta that is same deflection angle. So, if you have a deflection angle vary Mach number then uh, the plot of uh, the, uh, the shock wave angle is given here ok this is the plot and if you take a particular Mach number then there are two uh, solutions for this problem. So, oblique shocks have two solutions for a given uh, Mach number and deflection angle. Mm, so, uh, they are uh, two solutions uh, uh, that is one solution is known as weak shock the other solution is the strong shock. Uh, in weak shocks uh, the angle of uh, the shock wave angle is small is lower uh, and the Mach number. So, if incoming Mach number is greater than 1 uh, and then uh, m 2 is also greater than 1 ok. So, this is a weak shock uh, beta for the weak shock is small is less uh, is actually small while for the same case there is another shock ok. There is a possibility of another shock uh, where beta is larger this is the strong shock ok beta is large and here uh, if the incoming Mach number is greater than 1 uh, the Mach number that goes uh, is less than 1. So, strong shocks are shocks in which uh, the downstream flow is uh, subsonic. Uh, in most of the case uh, we observe weak shocks very uh, frequently uh, strong shocks are observed in special cases uh, this is because the pressure ratio across the strong shock now that you get such a large change in Mach number will be extremely high. So, that is something that uh, you have to bear in mind. So, always when you look at oblique shock uh, look at this problem uh, whether it is a weak shock or a uh, strong shock. Now, you see again how this curve goes on you achieve maximum um, at a certain point and beyond that uh, for a given uh, uh, particular curve beyond that there are no solutions. So, for a given Mach number suppose uh, we are considering this Mach number. Um, so, this particular Mach number you see that there is a maximum angle for that particular. Uh, uh, so, this is the locus of uh, all the maximum angles if the angle of deflection is greater than the uh, maximum angle uh, then uh, there can be no uh, attached solutions. So, the way it goes is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and if I take uh, for example, a particular uh, Mach number uh, which is um, considering the angle 20 degrees. So, uh, the it is about 1.9. So, it is very close to uh, 1.9 for uh, 20 degrees yeah for 20 degrees is close to 1.9. Uh, so, for a Mach number of 1.9 if the uh, angle of deflection is increased beyond uh, 20 degrees uh, then there is no attached solution. So, uh, this kind of solution where the shock wave is attached to the wedge is called an attached solution. Here the angle of the wedge or angle of deflection is lesser than the maximum angle uh, while if uh, the angle is greater than maximum angle then you call it a uh, detached uh, shock then you form detached shocks like this. So, in almost all our analysis we are concerned with attached shocks. Okay, but we you should understand this when you do your uh, analysis or apply things to problems then always uh, see whether uh, the oblique shock is attached or uh, detached 
and uh, you should observe how uh, things change for example if you take the same deflection angle and you increase uh, Mach number mm, so as Mach number is increased you are uh, increasing the Mach number this uh, side for the same uh, angle delta being constant you can see that uh, the shock wave angle decreases or it comes closer and closer to the body so that is uh, important uh, then um, for the same uh, Mach number uh, if you have the same Mach number and uh, you increase uh, the deflection angle your oblique shock angle uh, increases uh, until the maximum uh, uh, deflection angle beyond that there is no uh, solution uh, attached solution and for each uh, Mach number there are two solutions where there is an attached shock one is the weak shock the other one is the uh, strong shock this so this is the essence of uh, m theta beta relationships so what is attached shock and what is detached shock when are they formed uh, this is something you have to uh, bear in mind so, uh, to coming to uh, a uh, close of these uh, discussions on oblique shocks, uh, as I told initially, the oblique shocks uh, are the analysis that we did is for a two dimensional flow, typical are uh, plates at angles, wedges and so on. Uh, the same kind of analysis can be done for uh, cones, uh, axisymmetric bodies but uh, there is a difference uh, the difference is that uh, in your in the oblique shocks um, it's two dimensional so uh, the if you look at the streams lines the stream lines just uh, uh, go across the shock and then they um, deflect according to the angle of the wedge all across uh, so if you consider uh, the direction which is perpendicular to this uh, sheet of paper uh, all across that uh, it will all deflect uniformly to uh, theta but uh, that is not the case in case of an conical shock because now this is axisymmetric so there is a uh, uh, another direction where things are also uh, are different they are not the same so because of that uh, in uh, conical shocks uh, the streamlines are not as uh, parallel uh, as in oblique shocks they undergo a convergence towards the uh, oblique shock surf uh, to the conical surface. Uh, so, this is quite different from uh, the oblique shock. Of course, an oblique shock is also formed for a, a conical uh, body. So, this is a cone shock or called as conical shock, but the relationships between theta, beta, theta and the strength of the shock are quite different. Uh, because of this uh, change or convergence of streamlines uh, towards the uh, surface. So, the streamlines are not parallel, they uh, in fact undergo a small change. Across the shock, it is a discontinuity. After that, there are no other uh, uh, sources of entropy. So, you can consider the flow to be isentropic uh, and uh, you can write the equations. Of course, we will not go into details of. Uh, these equations these are known as taylor mccall equation the key idea you have to understand is when you are considering a conical body and shock it's the uh, even though the shock ob uh, appears oblique in nature uh, you cannot apply the oblique shock relations there you have to use the conical shock relations these are plotted uh, you can get these plots one uh, main feature you have to understand uh, is that uh, angle of uh, conical shock is always greater uh, than that for an oblique shock for the same uh, deflection angle and uh, the uh, what we are interested in is uh, actually the pressure over the conical surface because you have a, a, a change of convergence of streamlines the velocity keeps changing uh, across the uh, rays of these uh, cone rays across these rays. So, um, the pressure is not uniform in this region, uh, it is not a uniform flow. Uh, so, we are interested in uh, the pressure on the conical surface on the body and these are plotted, uh, these things can be plotted. Uh, so, main idea here is uh, though you get oblique shocks 
uh, in cones also which is known as conical shock they are not the same as uh, oblique shocks for uh, wedges there is a slight there are differences uh, but the basic principle remains the same that if the flow has to take a turn in a supersonic uh, condition and the turn is towards itself it is a compression kind of nature then oblique shocks are formed and we have done the analysis for uh, oblique shocks. So, next uh, we will look if the flow has to turn away uh, from its initial direction what to do. So, that is the expansion waves.